If you've got a RadioMaster TX16S, you may have noticed that it's got some extra trim switches. Or you, you may have noticed that you're not using the trim switches for anything anyway. Wouldn't it be nice if we could repurpose those trim switches to do something really cool? Or if you've got a TBS Tango 2, you've got two momentary switches here on the back of the radio and I'm willing to bet you don't need two momentary switches. What if you could turn a momentary switch on your OpenTX radio into a much more useful kind of rotary switch or even like a slider? Check it out. Take a look here at channel 7 and watch what happens when I hit this uh, momentary switch. One, two, three. One, two, three. Do you see? It's just rotating through three positions. And that's what I'm going to show you how to do in this video. How to turn a momentary switch into like a knob or a slider or, well, basically just use it in any way you want. I'm Joshua Bardwell and you're going to learn something today. Before we get into the video, I got to give credit to the person who showed me this technique. Uh, their name is Texema Vicente. I'm sure I've said that wrong. And they basically explained the entire technique to me. Uh, and then I was like, whoa, that's really cool. And now we're going to make a video about it. But credit where credit's due. On with the video. Hey there, folks. It's Joshua from the future here. Uh, throughout this video, you are going to hear when Joshua is pressing his trim Maximum switch. Trim you're going to hear this nonsense. Uh, and uh, I didn't figure out how to disable that correctly until the end of the video. So let me show you. You should do it now. And then you can laugh late throughout the video as Joshua is annoyed at those sounds. What you need to do is you need to press the model key on your radio or uh, the OK, the menu key on a, a FreeSky radio to get to the model setup screen. You're then going to page over to the flight mode screen. And I'm assuming that most everybody is just using flight mode zero and they haven't messed with flight modes. Uh, and what you're going to do is you're going to click once to edit that. You're going to scroll over to here where you see rudder trim. Uh, and for whichever trim switch you're going to use for this function or for all of them, edit and roll to the right or left to put uh, dashes there. So you just want to see that basically means the trim switch is disabled. We're just going to disable all the trim switches here and the trim switches can still be used for this function, but they won't uh, make the sounds. I'm going to go back to my mixes screen now and I'm going to go back down to uh, channel seven where I created that mixer line. Uh, I'll go ahead and edit that and I'm going to go down and I'm going to change my source. And what I want my source to be is as follows. I want my source to be max. And what max does is it simply sets the channel to a fixed value that will be controlled by some other thing. Uh, so we'll change it to max. And the weight is going to be, uh, what we'll do is we'll click once. So weight is blinking, meaning we're editing it. And then we'll long press and it will change to GV1. Now global variables are, well, they're, they're variables that exist in the model and other parts of the model can look up the value of the variable and then do things based on it. So you could have a global variable be a part of your X. You could have a global variable control your expo. You could have a global variable control your rates and you can modify that global variable and then it changes everywhere in the model. So in this case, uh, so we've got that set up. We're going to hit return. We're going to then back out one more time and one more time again to the mixes screen. And then we're going to page over to the global variable screen. Now, if you wanted to manually set the value of a global variable, this is where you do it. But that's kind of silly. That's not how we're going to use it. Instead, we're going to page to the special function screen. And we're going to use a special function that is tied to a switch to modify the value of that global variable. Here in the special function screen, we're going to pick the first special function line that isn't used and we're going to click to edit it. And the first thing we have to do is tell it which switch is going to activate this special function. So I'll click one time and then uh, it doesn't automatically pick up the switch. So you're just going to long press and go to trims and we have the option to select trim RL, which is rudder left and trim RR, which is rudder right. 
What I want to do is, uh, I think of pushing to the right as incrementing. So I'm going to push RR uh, to, as the switch that activates this. And then the function we're going to use is we're going to adjust a global variable. The global variable in my case is going to be global variable one. If you're not using global variable one, just select whichever global variable you are using. And uh, for the value, what we're going to need to do is highlight the value and long press, and that will bring this menu up. And what we want to do is increment and decrement the global variable. We don't want to just set it to a specific value. So we're going to highlight ink slash decrement, and we're going to add uh, and the exact value here uh, is going to depend on how many uh, individual steps you want in your cycle. So we're just going to use 50 here, and that'll rotate through, you'll see, it'll rotate through a certain number of positions. So I'm just going to increment this global variable by 50. And then the last thing I need to do is highlight this checkbox and enable it. Otherwise, this special function will not work. Kind of seems kind of dumb because we already told it which switch we want to use, but anyway. Okay, so I'm going to return back out of that. And then I'm going to go back to the global variables. And what I want you to see is that, hold on, let me reset this. I'm not sure why. There we go. Oh, that's interesting. All right, anyway. Uh, what I want you to see is that when I push this switch, Trim center. it continues to increment this variable until a maximum of 1024 and then it can't go any higher. So we've kind of done it, but we kind of haven't done it because we don't have any way, we, we don't have any way to cycle this back around to the beginning and we don't have any way to sort of reset it back to zero. Here's how we're going to accomplish that. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clear this line and then I'm going to go to not the special function screen, but the, uh, the logical switches screen. And a logical switch is kind of like a switch that you flip, right? But it is based on some condition in the radio. And it sort of moves when that logical condition becomes true. So again, I'm going to pick a line here that is not being used. I'm just going to pick logical switch LO1 and click once to edit it. And we're going to start by selecting the uh, comparison type that we're going to use. And the comparison type is going to be a greater than X and the first variable, I'm going to click once to edit and then long press to choose a global variable. The first variable is going to be GV1 or whichever global variable you're using for this. And the switch will become true when that global variable is greater than, well, here we again can pick a value. We could pick any value between, uh, you know, 50 and 1024. We've chosen to increment the global variable by 50 each time. And then this switch condition will determine how many increments we get before it resets back to zero. So if I were to set this to, let's say, 200, then we would get one, two, three, four, before for uh for uh positions in the cycle before it reset again. So let's set this to 200. So now this logical switch will become true when global variable one is greater than 200. So why isn't it true right now? Because I'm pretty sure. Did I reset that global variable? I did. So if we go back here to the logical switches screen. What we should see is that, so 50, 100, 150, 200, and it becomes true. So here we've got one, two, three, four, four uh, positions before it resets back to the beginning. I'm going to change that. I have an idea for how I'm going to use this. I want three positions. So for three positions, I'm going to lower this to 150. Now we go back to special functions and we're going to set up another special function and this special function will become true. I'm going to long press the jog wheel and I'm going to go to logical switches and I'm going to use logical switch 01, the logical switch that I just set up. When that logical switch becomes true, what we're going to do is we are going to adjust GV1 to a value of he says it's go to a value of negative 50. 
That doesn't seem right to me. Let's try it and see how it works. So when that switch becomes true, we'll adjust GV1 to a value of zero. In other words, each time we hit the right switch, we're going to increment that global variable by 50 until it gets up to a maximum value, at which point the logical switch will trip and will cause the second special function to reset it back to zero. Let's see if that works. We will go back to the global variable screen, and here we go. 50, 100. Maximum one. trim reached. Maximum trim reached. That's just super annoying. How about you shut up? Trim center. Okay. It did work though, watch. 50, 100, 150, 0. 50, 100, 150, 0. 50, 100, 150, 0. It is working. And if we go back out, we can see also that channel 7 is, oh, we got a problem. You see, inside the radio, the channel can go up to a value of 1024, but in Betaflight, that's not gonna work. Take a look here in Betaflight. See, as I move that, it's going up to a maximum value of 2010 and then just staying there. We have to keep it within the 1000 to 2000 range that Betaflight expects. There's no problem. We can easily modify this. We're gonna go to the global functions and we're gonna change it. We're just, let's just make it adjust by 10. Who cares? We'll make it adjust by 10. And then since we want three positions, we're gonna go to the logical switch and we're gonna make the maximum value be 30. It's gonna take me a second to get down there. Okay, so now, what do we see? Oh, interesting. It's going 1500. It is, it's working, but it's only going to 1500. So maybe we want to reset. When we reset, maybe we want to adjust it not to zero, but to minus 100 which will take it down to a thousand in the receiver tab. I bet that's going to be work. I bet that's going to work. Okay, here we go. Maximum trim reach. There we go. So now it takes it down to minus a hundred or the minimum value. Maximum trim reached. Maximum trim reached. Maximum trim reached. Oh, shut up. But then it doesn't reset until it gets all the way up to 30. Interesting. So we would need to change the, those increments look a little small to me. Like I would like the increments to be a little bigger. So let's have it adjust by plus or minus, let's say 20. We're gonna to adjust to minus 100, which will take it all the way down to the minimum value. And our condition for resetting is gonna be that it's greater than, we're gonna start at minus 100, and then we're gonna go minus 80, minus 60, minus 40. So the, the trigger for resetting the channel is going to be minus 40. Got it. Center. Okay, here we go. There we go. Now some of you might be a little annoyed that I have, why didn't I just figure this stuff out before I recorded the video? And the answer is that well, that's just not how I make videos. But also, I wanted to walk you through the process a little bit of figuring out these numbers because you can see that now I could change that reset threshold to give me four, five, six, seven. I could think I could have up to 20, 10, because it's an increment of 20 and I have 1,000 to 2,000. No, yeah, 10. I can have up to 10 individual sections just by changing that reset threshold. And if I wanted to take the increment amount down from 20 to 10. I could get uh, maybe as much as 20 individual sort of sections in this if I really wanted to. I don't know why you would do that, but you certainly could. And you can easily tweak those numbers to fit your particular needs. You may already be thinking of ways to use this feature, but I wanna show you one just to kind of put the idea in your head, and that is to switch OSD profiles. Betaflight has up to three OSD profiles. So you could have one OSD profile that's like super clean, uh, just shows voltage maybe, one OSD profile that's like super cluttered with all the stuff you might wanna see in, I don't know, a third 
third profile that's somewhere in between. And yeah, you can switch these OSD profiles with a three position switch. That's no problem. But what if you, well, what if you just use all your three position switches? Or what if you've got a radio like the Tango 2, which doesn't have a ton of three position switches, but the Tango 2 does have these two momentary buttons on the back. And frankly, a lot of people probably don't use them. You can convert those momentaries into three positions or four or five or six position rotary switches using this method. And the way you'd set that up is, well, the, the, first, the first thing you do is you'd set up your individual OSD profile. So for example, uh, here's OSD profile number one is this first column of checkboxes. OSD profile two is the second column and OSD profile three is the third column. So let's just say that in OSD profile three, we're just going to have the battery average cell voltage. And we can preview that by just switching here. There we go. And then let's make OSD profile three just be nothing, just for the sake of argument. So now we've set up our OSD profiles and we'll go ahead and save that. And we can go into the adjustments screen. And what we'll do is we will enable one of the adjustments. We will choose the aux channel. In my case, it's aux two is the one that's moving. We're going to drag this to cover the entire range of the aux channel. And then we will apply the change OSD profile selection via channel aux two. It's not working because the freaking OSD profile wants the channel to be low, middle and high. We can do this. We can do this. Model adjust, no problem. I just need to tweak. I just need to tweak these parameters. So the special function is going to adjust it by a hundred, and the reset is going to be plus one hundred. And what that's going to make the channel do? Look in the receiver tab. What that's going to make the channel do is it's going to be at zero, middle, high. We basically turned this momentary switch into a three position switch that cycles around. And then in the OSD tab, in the adjustments tab, it's aux three. That's my bad. There we go. Save OSD. It's not changing. I know this is working though. It's not updating the OSD profile here in the configurator. I'm like 100% sure this has to be. Oh, no, 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 no. It's working. Oh, and we also need to change this. Boom. Aux three, aux three, save. OSD. Dang it. It's not changing the OSD profile that's previewed. I'm not actually sure if that means it's not working. I really think it should be working though. Ha! Anyway, uh, I think the configurator just doesn't uh, show the updated OSD profile. And that's going to do it for this video. Uh, I hope that if you've watched this long, you also could put a little thought into how you might modify this stuff. For example, you could change it to have as many or as few individual positions as you want. Sure, we talked about that. But also, you could set it up so that like, if you click to the right, it increments. And if you click to the left, it decrements and goes back down. Hmm, how would you do that? Well, you'd need another special function to decrement tied to the tied to the left movement of the switch. And you'd need another special function to reset when you decrement it down off the bottom to reset it back to the top but I'm sure you could figure that out if you've come this far. Thank you so much for watching. I have a whole playlist of videos about cool things you can do with OpenTX. I'm going to put a link to that down in the video description, and maybe you'll check those out if you're interested in some more advanced OpenTX programming. But that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Happy flying. You guys, I don't know where I am, and... I, I don't know what's going to happen, but if I don't make it out of this, I just want to know that you subscribe to my channel or, or maybe join my Patreon or, or click one of click one of these videos I picked out for you. <laughs>